Hey, I'm Simon. In the last few videos I was talking about how to build Java applications with various technologies. But how do we run that in the cloud? Today I'd like to talk to you about Heroku. Heroku is a platform as a service and in my opinion it's an easy way to run your Java applications. So how to start with Heroku? Starting with Heroku is easy. Just go to heroku.com and create a new account. Once you have created an account and have logged in, you will be redirected to the Heroku dashboard. Here you can see my dashboard. I already have an application created, the JTA4. Uh, we could also create a new application right here from the dashboard. But we don't want to do that, we want to use the CLI. Heroku comes with the CLI and in my opinion it's much easier to use the CLI than the dashboard UI. To install the CLI you will find uh, the link in the documentation. Here we have the Heroku CLI. You can click on the link and then you will be redirected to the Heroku CLI page and here you will find all the information how to install the Heroku CLI. You will also find the binaries to install with Mac or Windows. Once you have done that, you have to log in to the CLI with Heroku CLI and then you're ready to go. Now we want to create a new web application. So to do that, we go to start.spring.io and uh, add a dependency Spring Web. We can adjust the group and the artifact name and then hit the generate button and it will download a zip file. Once you have downloaded the zip file, you can go to the directory where you have downloaded the zip file and simply extract it. Then you can open a shell from that directory and then you can start to use the Heroku CLI. But first, how do we deploy to Heroku? Deploying to Heroku by default uses a Git repo. So that means if you create the Heroku application, you also create a Git repo and then you can push the code to this repo and Heroku will build your application and run it. So to use our downloaded application as a Git repo, we first have to init the Git repo. That is done with git init and that's it. Now we can add the files and commit the code. Now the question is where do we push it? We didn't have created an application so far, far, so we want to do that. We can use Heroku create and Heroku create will create a new application and it will assign a URL. So Radiant Citadel 84872 is a generated name and it has an accordingly uh, Git repo on Heroku that we want to use to push the code. The name of the application is a random name. You can also pass the name of the application while doing uh, the create or you can change it later if you like to. Now to push the application we have uh, a new remote. So Heroku create creates also a new remote in our local Git repo and we can use that. So we use push and then we push to Heroku. Master is the branch name. And once we do that, it will uh, upload the files and then it will start a build. So it detects Java and it starts to download the Maven dependencies because we are using Maven here in that example. And suddenly it fails. So it fails while compiling because it says uh, invalid target release 17. Why that? That's because Heroku by default uses Java 8. And if you go to start.spring.io, the new default is Java 17. So we have to find a way how to change the Java version for our uh, application. This is pretty easy. Uh, just go to the project directory and create a new file. The file name must be uh, system.properties. And in this file, you just have to add a line Java Runtime version 17. And this will tell Heroku to use 
uh, this version instead of the default version A. After you created the file, you have to add this file to the git repo. And then we can again push uh, to the remote Heroku our master branch, like so. And uh, this time it uh, detects that we have uh, OpenJDK 17 or it uses OpenJDK 17 and hopefully the build will uh, succeed. And then once is, the build is successful, it will uh, discover the process type. Um, the default for that is web in our case and it will use build packs. Build packs is a specification and the mechanism to create um, container images on the fly. And finally, it will launch our application and we can start the application in the browser. There's a command Heroku open and this will open our application in the default browser. Now we see an error, 404, so it doesn't find anything. That's just because we didn't add any pages or any REST controls to our Spring Boot application. So that's it for now. I hope you liked the Heroku quick start and saw how easy it is to run a Java application on Heroku. If you liked the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends 